Now here's a question for you. Why is there no lightning in Antarctica? If you look at a map of lightning strikes, you'll see a big glaring gap in the polar regions. But to know why, we've got to backtrack to think about where lightning actually comes from. So relax, let your mind wander with me. Picture a hot summer afternoon, that sticky, thick air kind of feeling. Imagine those dark, ominous clouds that blacken the sky rolling in, the static prickling in the atmosphere before those big, fat raindrops start to fall. Those thunderstorm clouds, or cumulonimbus if you want to get technical, have huge amounts of energy in them. You can quite literally feel it in the electricity in the air. They get thousands and thousands of meters tall, and the biggest ones can even extend all the way to the tropopause, which is the boundary between the lowest and the second lowest layers of the atmosphere, and which can act like a kind of lid on our weather. They're formed by convection, which is exactly the same process that causes bubbles to rise in a boiling saucepan of water. The sun's energy heats up the ground and the layer of air immediately above it. Now, you probably know that warm air rises, so having this kind of setup with warm air underneath cold air is actually pretty unstable because the warm air wants to rise and the colder air on top wants to sink. So that's exactly what happens. You get lots and lots of up and down motion where hot air's rising and cool air is sinking, producing this overturning loop. In the saucepan, you can see bubbles rising to the surface where there are plumes of hot water, and that's pretty much exactly what happens in the atmosphere too. As warm air rises, it starts to cool down, and at some point it gets cold enough that all the water vapour it contains condenses into a cloud. Those clouds develop, getting taller and taller and taller and taller as the sun's energy fuels convection. Inside that cloud, there are loads of different types of particles at different stages of their journey to becoming precipitation. There are teeny tiny liquid droplets, ice crystals of various sizes, and big fat proto hailstones. And they're all getting buffeted up and down in the updrafts and smashing into each other. All of that activity produces an electrical charge difference between the top and the bottom of the cloud. And eventually that charge separation builds so much that it produces lightning, which redistributes all that pent up energy towards the ground. Given all of that, it makes sense that lightning doesn't happen everywhere equally. It strikes much more over land because land heats up much more than over the ocean, so convection can actually generate these massive energetic thunderclouds much more easily. Lightning is also much more concentrated in the hot, humid tropics where there's loads more energy for convection and also lots more water vapour hanging around in the air. Plus, the taller the cloud, the more electrical charge can develop, and the tallest clouds happen to happen near the equator because that lid on the atmosphere, the tropopause, is much higher there than anywhere else. So there are a few reasons why there's no lightning in Antarctica. Firstly, it's too cold at those latitudes to have any meaningful convection. The deepest clouds you normally see down south tend to be stratocumulus, and generally cloud layers in the polar regions are pretty thin. Second, it's hella dry. Antarctica is the world's largest desert, and the Greenland ice sheet is pretty parched too. There just ain't enough water vapour in the polar atmosphere to produce those kinds of towering cumulonimbus clouds. And then lastly, you need that rowdy vertical motion in the atmosphere to really get convection going. Mostly, the polar atmosphere is very stable, with cold air on the bottom chilling out next to the frozen ice sheet, and then slightly warmer air on top, which is exactly where it wants to be, so, you know, boom, no vertical movement. And besides, even if you did have convection, the clouds couldn't get as tall as they can near the equator, because the tropopause is much lower near the poles. As it goes, the story is mostly the same for the high Arctic, which is also pretty damn cold, especially over the Arctic Ocean. But increasingly, lightning is actually being detected in the Arctic, where it's never been seen before. As we change our climate, and remember the Arctic is warming three or even four times faster than the rest of the planet, we are changing the atmosphere a lot. So there's a hell of a lot more energy in the atmosphere to drive that kind of convection. And a 2021 study showed that the number of lightning strikes in the high Arctic has increased dramatically as temperatures have climbed. You can even see a cluster of red dots on this map near the North Pole. 
It's partly because of the extra heat, partly because the dramatic loss of sea ice allows warm, wet air to push much deeper into the Arctic, and potentially partly because Arctic wildfires are adding smoke particles into the air that can seed thunderclouds. Yet more examples of how human activity is transforming the planet.